Good afternoon. Welcome to today's ceremony where we will honor the class of 2022 graduates. I am Margaret Chadwell, Associate Dean for Student Affairs and Career Development. It is my distinct pleasure to preside over the medical school's 154th commencement ceremony. We are delighted to have you here in person or joining us from afar, live streaming. And it is fitting today that we are coming to you from the Renaissance City in this magnificent Detroit landmark to celebrate a time of rebirth and new beginnings as we providentially emerge from the pandemic and launch this historic class of 2022, Wayne Warrior MDs. This momentous occasion would not be possible without all of you gathered here who have poured into and encouraged your graduates along with us throughout their long years of study. Parents, grandparents, spouses, friends, significant others, we here acknowledge your strong partnership, it might have been silent, but with us on this road to MD. And I am thrilled to greet my own parents up there in the suite um, who, have, who are joining us in-house today. And uh, they've been my strong supports for, gosh, a long time now, a little while. Uh, since, and I was well, sitting in your seats. Uh, 307 new physicians will be called to the stage today. I believe that's the largest class in the country. And we couldn't be more proud of you and to present them to you here today. We will begin today's ceremony with a welcome from Governor Basuito. Dr. Michael Basuito is a member of the Wayne State University Board of Governors and a 1981 graduate of the Wayne State School of Medicine. He has dedicated his life to serving his profession and training future physicians, both in research and in teaching medical students and surgical residents. He has been active in philanthropy for causes he supports, including our school. Dr. Basuito has performed thousands of charitable surgical procedures on children around the world through Operation Kindness, a charitable surgical organization he co-founded Operation Kindness provides surgical services to infants and children who live in areas lacking the expertise to treat deformities, including cleft lip and palate. Dr. Basuito and his team have been performing these surgeries for more than 25 years, and they donate their time, services, and supplies free of charge. He is a true role model, exemplifying the Wayne Warrior MD spirit and a tireless and effective champion for our school. Please welcome Governor Brasuito. On behalf of the Board of Governors, I congratulate all of the graduates of our School of Medicine class of 2022, your families, and all who have supported you to reach this goal. I would like to introduce other members of the Board of Governors who have joined us today to celebrate with you. I ask that they stand when I call their names. Our chair, and probably the hardest working board chair for a university in this state, Governor Mark Gaffney. Our vice chair, Governor Shirley Stencato. and former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court and Governor Marilyn Kelly. Your achievements celebrated today are historic. You were forced to complete your medical education in the midst of a once every 100 years pandemic. Without precedent to rely upon, your Wayne State academic DNA guided you and you did what Wayne physicians have done for over 150 years. You adapted and you responded. Response to crisis is a hallmark of Wayne physicians. Our alumni have served in prominent leadership roles in every conflict since the Civil War and in many other crises that have arisen around the world. Today, you become a family member of an academic pedigree renowned for, pro for producing leaders and advancing the science and art of medicine. Our commencement speaker today is a classic example. The list of pioneering successes that have arisen from our family in the School of Medicine is too long to list here, 
But for the sake of family members and friends of our graduates, I will cite a few. Some of the original research on insulin in the pancreas was done here at Wayne State. One of our faculty members became the world authority on zinc metabolism. The perinatology branch of the National Institute of Health is located at Wayne State because of our cutting edge research in women's health. The first drug approved for the treatment of HIV was developed by one of our, one of our doctors here at Wayne State University. The American College of Emergency Physicians was founded within our surgery department in the emergency room at Detroit Receiving Hospital. We are known worldwide for our excellence in surgical trauma care. And the very first successful open heart surgery was done by a Wayne State surgeon at Harper Hospital. I think those are all things that we can be very proud of. This day is always a very special one for me. I remember sitting where you were, where you are right now, and it was in 1981 that I graduated. I was the kid from Roseville High School, and then my classmate, Jerry Leninger, was the guy from East Detroit High School. Our high schools were rivals, but we became friends in medical school. Jerry went on to become one of the most successful and celebrated astronauts in the history of the NASA space program. Your predecessors have set a very high bar for you. I hope you appreciate that. Let me end by starting with the beginning. After the Civil War, five physicians returned to Detroit and they saw a need and had a vision for a medical school in Detroit. They leased part of the north section of Harper Hospital and in 1868 formed the Detroit Medical College. That evolved into Wayne State University and the School of Medicine. Today, you become the professional offspring of those five Civil War physicians. Carry on the Wayne tradition and remain close to your Wayne family, and congratulations, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Versuito. I would like to introduce other important members of our university community who took time from their busy schedules to celebrate with us. Will members of the Board of Governors, President's Cabinet, Council of Deans, and Departmental Faculty from the School of Medicine please rise and be acknowledged. Thank you for being here today. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 12th president of Wayne State University, Dr. M. Roy Wilson. President Wilson. Thank you. Hello, graduates. It's a privilege to share your special day with you. Succeeding in medical school is probably one of the hardest things you've done in your lives, but you, the class of 2022, have done so under the most extraordinary circumstances. It's now been more than two years since the beginning of the pandemic, and you've persevered. You are now entering medicine at a time of unprecedented opportunity when the reasons you chose medicine will be affirmed and on full display. Your medical school is special. Your leadership and faculty are committed to the truest ideals of our professions. But most of all, you are the crown jewels of this institution. This is a once in a generation moment. We have all witnessed the awesome heroism being displayed by our frontline doctors, and I want to be sure to add other healthcare providers in a war against a deadly virus in which personal comforts and safety have been subordinated to the pursuit of saving lives. As Teddy Roosevelt once said, the credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. These heroes and sheroes, men and women, physicians and other healthcare workers have been in the arena. And why 
Have they made such profound personal sacrifices for a larger societal benefit and continue to do so? Because they can make a difference. That's what's expected of them, and it's ingrained in their identity as doctors. I'd like to share something with you that I've learned many years ago. Once you've crossed the stage and accepted your MD diploma, you're never, ever going to not be a doctor again. <laughs> Being a doctor is not just a profession. It's more than that. It's an identity. The core of who you are, compassionate, empathetic, the burning need to make a difference, all the things that made you start this quest four years ago will always, from this moment henceforth, be a part of your identity as a doctor. After almost 19 years of leading one or another university, I am still proudly a doctor. It's a strong identity. Embrace it. The privilege, respect, opportunities that come with it but also the responsibilities, the burdens, the sacrifice. And make no mistake about it, perhaps like no other time in modern history, this is a time of great responsibility and sacrifice. Each of you, as have I, will be confronted with some life-altering event, experience, or decision that indelibly inscribes in your psyche. I am a doctor. My personal story involves my mother. She died in her early 50s due primarily to complications of lung cancer. As reports of her condition worsening reached me in Boston, I left my residency clinic to hurry home to Maryland to be with her. Fortunately, I was able to spend some time with her before she took her last breath. The most difficult thing I ever did in my life, and yet, at the same time, the most rewarding and privileged was to be able, as a doctor, to pronounce my mother dead and sign her death certificate. She was thereby spared the indignity of having to go to an emergency room where an unknown doctor would make that declaration. My final image of her as she was transported directly to the funeral home was that of a beautiful, peaceful, and dignified woman. Graduates, you will soon have that moment when you fully realize that you are now a real doctor, when the awesome responsibility and incredible opportunity of that identity will come into full display. Embrace that moment. It will become a part of you forever. I know you've heard this many times, but please also hear from me. I am so proud of you. Congratulations, doctors. You're great. Do great things. And it's been my honor to celebrate with the class of 2022. Thank you. Thank you, President Wilson. Our next speaker is Dr. Weil Sacker, the Dean of Wayne State University School of Medicine. Dr. Sacker is a nationally recognized academic pathologist with a track record of independent and collaborative National Institutes of Health funding and with seminal contributions in the field of genitourinary neoplasia and prostate cancer. He has been involved in numerous clinical trials as an expert pathologist. In other clinical studies, he is evaluating genetic changes and expression profiling as markers for cancer diagnosis and prognosis. In addition, Dr. Sacker is an active investigator on several funded basic research projects on the underlying molecular mechanism of prostate tumor progression and metastasis. He has also assumed leadership roles in professional and community-based organizations, including the National Arab American Medical Association and the Arab Community Center for Economic and Social Services. Dr. Sacker indeed has a long history of clinical excellence, community leadership, and an unwavering commitment to our medical school, and we are pleased to welcome him today for his inaugural commencement as dean. Please welcome Dr. Sacker.
Thank you, Dr. Chadwell. Congratulations, heartly congratulations to you and to your families who have chaperoned your trip, your long journey to this glorious moment. We are, again, yes, very proud of you, very proud of your persistent and achievement during one of the most difficult school years that this class and unfortunately a couple of other classes of Wayne State University School of Medicine have experienced. Governor Basuito and President Wilson both mentioned the effect of historical pandemic on everything that we do, but especially on education and medical education. I would like to offer, in addition to that dark picture, there are glimpses of hope around us right here in this community. You witnessed your faculty, your teachers, many of them became friends, stepping up to the plate in one of the hardest hit city in the nation and probably beyond. Your emergency room doctors, your ICU doctors, your infectious disease doctors, your laboratory and testing doctors, again and again, over and over. This is definitely something that we are proud of, and you witnessed your first hand yourself. More so, you participated day in and day out in these achievements. So that is a true baptizing by fire during your clinical years. Now, you are moving into the next stage. You are graduating as Wayne State University Medical School doctors. The brand that this school graduates is very special, known here and around the country. Excellent doctors, magnificent clinical skills, and a heightened sense of compassion and social justice. When you look at the journey that you are going to embark over the next many, many years. Many of you, fortunately, will stay in Michigan. Wayne State University continues to supply the largest number of physicians for the state, particularly in the anticipated upcoming shortage of healthcare professionals in every category, definitely physicians included. We always say that at this stage, you will be able to think and dream and act to change the world. I would say to you that changing the world probably should start right here in our backyard. Our commitment to eliminate health disparities in this community and beyond should be unshakable. We talk about COVID, and COVID was one of the manifestations that heightened the disparities that we experienced, and we knew it existed before. It only exacerbated it. So as you travel to your residencies here and beyond, you are joining a 25,000 strong medical school alumni, and many of you know them, and we have the president here who will talk more about that perhaps, but I want to tell you this force and their involvement in the life of the students day in and day out is something that we are very proud of, and it is a force that you will join and you will enrich with your commitment and with your talent. So. I would like to again congratulate you, wish you the best. Never forget, you are a Wayne State Medical School graduate. Congratulations.
Thank you, Dean Sacker. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Jack Folby, President of the Wayne State University Medical Alumni Association. Dr. Folby specializes in anesthesiology and is affiliated with several area hospitals. He and his family are true Wayne State Warrior MDs. Dr. Folby graduated from the School of Medicine in 1989. His brother Adam followed him, graduated in 2001, and his daughter Alana crossed the stage in, well, not this one, in 2021. Now that is a proud legacy family. He is an enthusiastic advocate for our school and provided his very steady support in navigating these pandemic years. Please welcome Dr. Jack Folby. Thank you, Dr. Chadwell, and good afternoon. As you heard, I'm Dr. Jack Folby of the class of 1989. Uh, I remember sitting in seats uh, at my graduation with my colleagues, singing to myself, hey, look, Ma, I made it. Uh, and that was 30 years before Panic in the Disco recorded it. As the president of the Wayne State University School of Medicine Alumni Association, I have the honor and privilege of welcoming you, the class of 22, into our alumni family. When, when you entered medical school four years ago, I'm sure you never expected to be performing clinical rotations during a pandemic, a pandemic that is taking the lives of more than a million people, more, more than a million Americans. Um, some of which you took care of, and some of those patients saw your faces as the last faces they ever saw. What a challenging, surreal, and yet in many ways career-affirming experience. Many physicians, especially physicians in training, wonder what they would do and how they would react under extraordinary circumstances. Well, you experienced it, and your response throughout this pandemic has been truly remarkable and inspiring. But I'm not surprised. As you've heard, for nearly 155 years, the Wayne State University School of Medicine has trained its students to be leaders, and the class of 2022 did not disappoint. You took the lead during the pandemic, and we know you will continue leading and caring for patients, regardless of race, religion, gender, or ability to pay. In fact, you will be taking an oath to do that. Over the last four years, the School of Medicine alumni have supported you generously through their donations of time, expertise, and dollars. Future docs, white coat ceremony, match day, and graduation. As graduates, it's now your turn to be there for the next generation of students, providing counsel, support, and guidance as they progress through their medical education. You will soon be role models and mentors for future alums and we trust you will embrace and honor that responsibility just as those who came before you. On behalf of more than 25,000 living alumni across the country and around the world, we wish you great success and welcome you as colleagues. Network with us, communicate with us, partner with us. Um, we look forward to a long and productive relationship working together with pride on our medical few, few, uh, with pride working together for our medical school's needs and its future. As has been mentioned today, a noble profession has been entrusted to you. Guard it well. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Dr. Folby. While this day is a truly momentous celebration and the fact that we are gathered together here mostly in person is truly joyous, we now come to a very solemn part of our ceremony. When we began our journey together in 2018, none of us could have foreseen that a world pandemic would challenge and impact the very fabric of your medical education. Just when you transitioned into your core clinical years as physicians in training, you were confronted with an invisible intruder that threatened to derail your preparations for practice, your transition to residency, and even the very lives of you and your loved ones. Your noble response for accepting and adapting to the realities of the COVID surge in Detroit, your service to this community, and your patience was truly commendable. If I had to choose a class to navigate the very rough waters of these last two years, it would be only you. 
With credit here to Dr. Sprague, our extra extraordinary Dean of Admissions, for hand selecting each one of you. Throughout this historic pandemic, you modeled resilience, flexibility, compassion, service, aptitude, and ingenuity. The isolation of the pandemic, rather than dividing, united us to be truly warrior strong. Together, you walked resolutely toward, forward to join the front lines in the heart of Detroit's COVID surge, learned to don PPE, administered testing, set the example for achieving 100% vaccination, and cared for the sick and dying while trying to keep your loved ones safe. With many of us contracting the virus ourselves, you became rapidly and regularly acquainted with death and dying during your training years in a way most physicians do not experience in their entire career. And we each suffered losses, a patient we cared for, a friend, a valued colleague, a distant or even a close family member. At this moment, we will take time to pay tribute to all these precious lives lost and to reflect on the essence that marks our physicians in training, their selfless service to patients and the communities in which they live. To help us do that, I would now like to uh, invite three of our graduates to the stage and introduce Lakshman Mulpuri, recipient of the 2022 Herman and Eva Bloom Award he will share some brief words of reflection on the service embodied and exhibited by this extraordinary class of our Wayne Warrior MDs. Lydia Ross and Julie Fink graciously agreed to symbolically light a candle in memory of all lives lost during the pandemic and their own loved ones who passed during their medical education. Lakshman, will you please come forward? Thank you, Dean Chadwell. My favorite description of a community came from a conversation I had with Auntie Ney, the founder of a small nonprofit on the west side of Detroit. When asked why her family had been helping their neighbors in their community for generations with shelter, food, and clothing, she simply responded to me, nobody was just anybody. Everybody was somebody in this community. And that's what a community really is. Ordinary people looking out for one another and taking the time to forge profound and seamless relationships so that neighbors may depend on neighbors when times are tough. As physicians, we will soon enter into this intuitive and cherished bond with the communities we integrate ourselves into. We will be there to hear our patients laugh, we will see them cry, and to feel both their pain and their appreciation. Medicine is a field of milestones, and as a result, our happiness is often derived from our ability to achieve personal goals. And not only to meet these personal goals, but to exceed them. But true joy can only be obtained through a commitment to a larger principle, one where the expression of self melds into a concern for the greater good. Mark Twain once said, to get the full value of joy, you must have someone to divide it with. We are entering a new era of medicine, one where it's all too easy to lose track of the individual. Now, more than ever, our patients and their neighborhoods will need physicians to not only serve as clinicians, confidants, and advisors, but as a voice for those so often marginalized. We must continue to challenge ourselves and our colleagues to look beyond the scope of our daily practice and advocate for the communities we will care for. I ask, who better to truly embody this sentiment than doctors trained at an institute of urban clinical excellence and imbued with the spirit and experience that can only be had from training and learning from the people of Detroit? Thank you, everyone, and congratulations to all my classmates.
Thank you. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Rana Oddish. Dr. Oddish is a critical care physician and the section head of pulmonary hypertension at Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit, where she also serves as medical director of the care experience. She is a 2002 graduate of the Wayne State School of Medicine and best-selling author of her memoir, In Shock, My Journey from Death to Recovery and the Redemptive Power of Hope, which has been incorporated into the curriculum of medical schools across the country, including our own, and translated into eight languages. In 2014, she was awarded the Speak Up Hero Award for her role in establishing the CLEAR program, which trains faculty and medical trainees in relationship-based, compassionate communication skills. In 2017, she was named Physician of the Year by Press Ganey for her work on improving communication. Mostly, most recently, U.S. News & World Report named Dr. Oddish a hospital hero for her work on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Rana Oddish. Congratulations, class of 2022. You know how much hard work and sacrifice was necessary to bring you to this moment. And you know how much of that hard work and sacrifice were not your own, but that of your family and your community. I share their pride in your accomplishments. You've accomplished so much and your most impactful work is yet to come. What an incredible place to be. When I sat where you were sitting 20 years ago, I imagined medicine as this complete, fully formed institution, one that honestly I just wanted to fit into, to be accepted by. And there were times I didn't feel like I belonged, for one thing, I had nearly electrocuted my lab partner in physics lab, and that didn't exactly feel like the start of an illustrious medical career. For another, I really valued compassionate, connected communication, and I was continually told that wasn't really the purview of physicians, that was for nurses and social workers. What I learned was that the institution I entered was just one possible structure. It wasn't complete. It represented the best that people could do then with what they knew at the time. But they didn't know what you know. They didn't know what it means to truly be part of a community, to serve at the level of the street, to be the only option for so many in need of care. And knowing what we know now after these past few difficult years, I believe they would have built a different system. One that invested in public health infrastructure, a system that understood the needs of marginalized communities and met those needs, a system that cared for its caregivers well, we need to build that system now, together. How do we do that? Well, I've learned that in order to produce that kind of change, you need a kind of moral imagination. You need to be able to imagine that the problems of strangers are your own. And though I've spent my career advocating for empathy and compassion in the ICU, empathy and compassion are not enough. We need to tie compassion to action, to move policy, to affect real change. And you'll find that as physicians, we are often told to stay in our lane on issues of poverty, homelessness, gun violence, social injustice. But make no mistake, as long as you are caring for humans, it is all our lane. I 
I've learned that to truly feel the force of your own power, it helps to be in opposition to another force. You have to have something trying to stop you in order to sense your own movement, your momentum. Fortunately, there will be many things that try to stop you. Know what you stand for. Be willing to stand for what's right and what's just. Know that what you stand to risk is always far less than what your patients stand to risk if you don't raise a dissenting voice. Because one of the most dangerous things we can encounter in the care of other humans is indifference. Speaking up takes courage, which is good, because I believe that in the end, courage is what makes all other virtues possible. The scope of your work, if you're very fortunate, will be so much larger than you can imagine. If you're lucky, it will be fueled by a genuine passion and grow organically out of moments that you feel a real discomfort. I felt that discomfort when I was critically ill in my own ICU, and I overheard colleagues say that I was circling the drain and trying to die on them. Learn to trust that discomfort. Our minds are constantly doing needs assessments. They're finding gaps. There are plenty of gaps. Fill them with new energy and wisdom. Don't accept that the way it's been is the way that it must be. Be the change that you wish to see. For yourself, I want you to stay present and aware of your internal world. I'll call it attunement. Pay attention to the moments where you feel a real spark, however small, the moment in your day where you truly come alive. Maybe you'll find it's teaching students. Maybe it will be a family meeting at the end of life or a procedure in the operating room. Move in the direction of the sparks. Not what society tells you is sparkly, and forgive me, not what your family tells you is sparkly. Your own sparks. It's up to you to create a career that lights you from the inside. You've worked too hard and come too far to allow your spark to be dimmed. If you allow yourself, as I once did, to believe that your only role is to cure, You'll have difficulty finding meaning on hard days, the days when we have no cure, no treatment, the days when the treatments fail or simply don't exist. I want you to know that your role is so much larger than that. Though medicine has a habit of valuing heroics, the truth is that your humanity is far more important than any imagined heroism. Our role is sacred. It is to witness, to guide, and to allow transformation. There will be so many moments when you have nothing available to offer but your presence. Trust that it is enough. And just as you've met this incredible milestone, you'll start to see new goals for yourself on the horizon. And you may encounter people who tell you that they can't imagine you in a role or a fellowship or a position of leadership. Remember, that is a failure of their imagination and not an indictment of your potential. Never allow someone's lack of imagination to define your future. And finally, Stay true to who you are. Allow the culture of medicine to bend a bit towards you. Don't contort yourself to fit it. Because in so many ways, you are wiser and more whole right now than medicine is. And please, let's all commit to bringing even more seats to the table. People who look and think differently than you. People who challenge you and disagree with you even. It's diversity of thought that allows true wisdom. One final point on the subject of wisdom. 
every difficult thing you have faced already in your lives, every lesson you learned in this long pandemic, every sacrifice you had to make, every difficult choice, there was a purpose for it. It got you to this moment. You carry that within you now. You are the definition of embodied wisdom, and that is why I know for certain that you will create the change, the institutions, and the world that we want to inhabit alongside our patients. My wish for you is that your work will sustain you and nurture you that you will see the problems and be moved to fundamentally reimagine the system, that you will maintain a radical hope that things can change, that with work we can better serve and heal our patients and each other. Congratulations, class of 2022. We've been waiting for you. Thank you, Dr. Oddish, for your inspiring remarks on this very special occasion. Ladies and gentlemen, now the most solemn moment of commencement, the presentation of the candidates and the conferral of the uh, degrees by the president. Candidates of the class of 2022, please rise. President Wilson and Dean Sacker, upon the recommendation of the Faculty of the School of Medicine, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. President Wilson. The authority to confer each of these degrees is vested by the people of the state of Michigan under the Constitution of the state in the Board of Governors of Wayne State University and by the Board of Governors, it is de de delegated to me. Each of these degrees is granted upon the recommendation of the faculty of the School of Medicine. I am proud to confer upon each of you the degree of Doctor of Medicine for which the faculty has recommended you, and I admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities of that degree. Congratulations. <laughs> Doctors, please be seated. We will now perform the ceremonial hooding of the graduates of the class of 2022 of the Wayne State University School of Medicine. The hood is part of the academic regalia that was originally designed as a head covering to keep heads warm in cold, unheated buildings. It dates back to the medieval days of some of the oldest universities in the world. Today, hoods are the most expressive part of the academic regalia. They indicate not only the field of study, which has been completed, but also the degree and the institution's colors. The hood with green velvet running along a black background represents the academic color of medicine, and the yellow and green silk colors represent Wayne State University. I will begin by reading the names of the candidates. Yes, all 307, so get comfortable. I will also read the names of the students that couldn't be with us today uh, because they sh certainly deserve their name to be read. Dr. Richard Baker, Senior Vice Dean and Vice Dean of Medical Education, and Dr. Kevin Sprague, our Associate Dean of Admissions, will be hooding the graduates. They will start us out, and President Wilson and Dean Sobel will congratulate the graduates while handing them their diploma. A professional photographer will photograph each graduate on stage. The auditorium aisles and stage front must be kept clear during the ceremony to permit the graduates to pass freely. We ask that you hold your applause collectively for all graduates until the end. Thank you. We'll start with our class president, Mugda Joshi.
I knew you couldn't help yourself. James Ninia. Mohammed Abbas. Emily Abraham. Allah Abu Mafus. Alexander Adler. Omar Mohammed Afifi. Catania Alaga. Farah Alam. Anjali Allengarden. Hassan Albir. Hassan Alfan Harawi. Nawar Al Jondi. Amani Al Kafaji. Sama Al Kuri. Spandana Alori. Zainab Al Musawi. Zara Al Katan. Basma Ali Caroline Amakov joining from afar Natni Anilovich Luisa Arevalo Ariana Armin. Alkani Arnold IV. Ahmad Bayasi. George Harold Baker the Fourth William George Banks
Radina Bardi joining from afar. Congratulations. Heya Beta. The Jaishwar Singh Bhava. Ferris Bayasi joining from afar. Zainab Beydoun Dabak. Carter Bench. Colin Bennett. Rami Beydoun. Aman Basin. Nona Batya. Ashley Blau. C. James Block, also earning his PhD. Hashem Ali Buerbanat. Lily Victoria Bonadonna. Holly Boyum joining us from afar. Congratulations. Christopher Bracken. Jamal Brooks. <laughs> Leah Buckley. Patrick Buckley. Matthew Burris. Jayla Campbell. <laughs> Rhett Carpenter Thompson. Sorry, Thompson. Got to get that right. May Chama. Eric Chain. Amin Kamal Sharara. Daniel Chen. Irene Chen, joining from afar. And Pratik Chintalapati, joining from India. Jody Chu. Mostafa Shuker.
Vanessa Chu. Ethan Cohen. Matthew Compton. Jamie Cooper. Anne Marie Craig. Naomi Kret. Jennifer Sway. Katrina Quizan joining from afar. Mara Darian making a special entrance. <laughs> Deepa Dariani. Sabrina Das. Sydney Davis Kiva. Stephen Dawes, not here, joining us from afar. Zachary Domofsky. Kareem Durrani. <laughs> New Do. Miranda Depker. Laura Elizabeth Donahue. Miriam Dow. Emma Drenth joining from afar. Congratulations. Eduard Josephovich Drizik. <laughs> Catherine Dreskovich and Tommy Precious Aching. Menar Idris. <laughs> Yasmin Karam El Ghul. <laughs> Kenneth Elkin. Christina Inescu. <laughs> Ricardo Engel. Lincoln Erickson. Patrick Etta.
Claire Yoon, joining from afar. Megan Fee. Dylan Feigenbaum. Danny Feng. Lisa Feng. Brian Fennell. Omar Emilio Fernandez. Julianne Flowers. Latoya Floyd. Brandon Foster. Liana Foster Bay. Michael Franklin. Alexis Freilich. We're going to change hooders at this point. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Baker and Dr. Sprague. And we have Dr. Steffies and Dr. Ayers coming up. Julie Fink. Jessica Gable. Sachin Gangley. Michael Garmel. Kelsey Gaylor. Joshua George Lopez. Mekta Gerard. I'm going to wait. <laughs> Ashley. Ashley. Okay. <laughs> Ashley Gibb. Ashley Gibb. <laughs> Jeffrey Ginter. <laughs> Hannah Glody. Jacob Glusky. Rebecca Goldstein. Irene Goraya.
Lakshmi S. Guruguntla. Hayden Guerra. Parul Gupta. Evan Gurney. Brian Thomas Gudermuth. Camilo Guzman. Abdallah Haikal. Shafi Hamid. Daniel Harris. Isabel Renee Hart. Christina Hart. Ahmed Hassan. Aaron Hendricks. Matthew Henry joining from afar. Sebastian Hoke also joining from afar. Gayane Hoivsepian also joining from afar. Christian Huber is here. Spencer Hunt. Inara Ismailova. Sierra Ivanix. Rahda Izar. Bridget Jacob. Samia Jaffa. Christina Jajika. Ahmed Jallo Jr. John Abraham Jrod. Japnam Jassel from afar. Jahanzeb Javed. Chelsea Miguel Johnson. Michael Johnson from afar. Peyton Johnston. Kesey Jones Farmer.
Riley Kaiser. Vikas Kanaganti. Johnny Castle from afar. Priya Kathuria. Maziar Kavuzi joining from afar. Vasiliki Kazdegliz. Destiny Kellum. Ryan Michael, Ryan Michael Kelly. Sachin Ketkar. Alicia Kambadi. Yusama Irfan Khan. Christy Katibi. Aza Kanish. Olivia Knoll. Sarah Knust. Jonathan Connell. Dylan Kulmis. Rebecca Jelaine Copeman. Casey Corhonen joining from afar. Andrew Kulik also earning his PhD. Dipin Kumar, joining from afar. Matthew Kuntz. Elizabeth Koopser. Kenneth Kutchman. Emily Lau. Daria Akami Lauer. Cooper Lorraine. Tristan Lemon. Colin Lazowski. Tessa Lewitt. Samuel Lichman Michael. Vivian Liu joining from afar. Hannah Lowe. Yeah. Audrey Lundy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Tony Lupro. Brendan Lynch. Megan McKenzie. Krishna Majmunder. Ebony Manigault. Nadine Mansour. Elizabeth Martin. Louis Masood. Thomas McCune. Joseph McCusker. Gabriel McGrath. Nicole Meeks. Gabriel was not here. Ali Mahadley. Neil Meda. Como Mandarada. Christopher Merriman. Nathaniel Messenger. Ryan Miller. Rhea Minowala. Ayush Mithal. Michael Montman. Abidal Rahman Mohammed. Paul Mojica joining from afar. John Molinari. Zachary Montgomery. Elizabeth more. Joshua Moroff. Lakshman Mulpuri. Nicole Murray. Arif Musa joining from afar. And at this point, we will hand off to another uh, set of faculty for the final coding. Hooding. And we have Dr. Wainio and Dr. K. Tariq Nabi.
Amanda Allen Niger. Sarah Nasser. Audrey Neal. Emily Neam. Aravind Nirmalan, joining from afar. Catherine Olivares. Obida Onuku. David Ostman. Mohammed Asto. Brendan Page. Molly Pantelic. Zachary Pardis. Hirsch Parekh. Rajuta Patel. Liz Patterson. Adam Pearl. Nawal Paracha. Annalisa Peterson. Nathan Fan. Maximilian Poletsky. Harshida Pinamaneni. Rashika Polisani. Monica Prasad. Nina Prieto. Thomas Shobichin. <laughs> Afreen Fatima Kadir. <laughs> Abigail Radomsky. Danielle Rangel Paradella. Marissa Ray. Para Razaki. Samantha Ray. Joining from afar, Caitlin Regan, Shomita Rode, J. 
Joel Rose Campreth. Lydia Ross. Tyler Edward Russeth. Ashna Sahi. Kabir Sandhu. Veronica Santana Ufret joining from afar. Muhammad Ali Serini. Siri Sarvapali. Colin Schlosser joining from afar. Michael Schneider. Daniel Schnick. Anthony Seely. Takia Shabazz. Allison Shanauskas. Lena Shukani. Nikki Sidhu. Matthew Zilbergleit. Sarah Skender. Julia Smeal. Alana Smith. Alexander Smith. Bowen Song. Ethan Stahl and Andrew Stangle, both not able to be here today. Jan Stevens. Abdul Rahman Suleiman. Praneet Sankara. Alexander Swantek. Jesse Brian Swantek. Nikki Taylor. Abigail Teitelbaum. Sophia Thieker. Shanita Thomas.
Kathleen Teardor, not able to be here. Claire Townsend. David V. Tran. Nithika Tripathi. Nicole Tuit. Therian Twitty. Naka Uchandu. Anita Vaishampayan. Akancha Vaishnav. Krishna Vemalopali. Neha Venkatesh. Rahul Viaz. Carol Walsh. Jonathan Warren. Martin Weaver. Victoria Elizabeth Weber. Madison Wheaton. Mark Wilhelm. Tyler Williford. Melissa Wills. Jacob Wilson. David Wright. Alexander Yang, also earning his PhD. Dorothy Yim. Jacob Young joining from afar. Rami M. Youssef. Getting a little help there. Adi Berti Zackley. <laughs> Christina Zaleski. Evan Zeddies.
Eugenia Zeng. And last but not least at all, Alexander Zetas. We made it. You made it. Now I would like to introduce Dr. Richard Baker, Senior Vice Dean and Vice Dean of Medical Education. Dr. Baker will administer the oath to the class. After the oath, please remain standing for your last class photo. Will the class of 2022 please stand and repeat each phrase of the professional oath after me. I also invite all physicians present to rise and join the newest members of our honored profession in speaking the oath. I do. I do solemnly swear by all that I hold most sacred that according to my ability and judgment, I will in every particular keep this my oath and covenant. I pledge to dedicate myself to the service of humanity and to honor the noble traditions of the medical profession, to hold those who have taught me this art as equal to my parents. and to live my life in partnership with them. To give my teachers the respect and gratitude which is their due. To regard my colleagues equally with my brethren. And to teach this art by precept, by lecture, and by every other mode of instruction. to those who practice the healing arts. As a physician, I will maintain the ultimate dignity of life while guiding its arrival, protecting its course, and easing its natural passage from this world. I will offer to those who seek my aid not only my knowledge and skills, but my warmth and compassion as well. Whatever in the lives of those I shall see or hear, either in my practice or outside of my practice, which should not be made public, this will I hold in silence, believing that such things should not be spoken. I will conduct myself with honesty and virtue, with conscience and dignity will I live my life and practice my art. In all circumstances, I will consider every individual as equal, without regard to race, creed, or gender, refusing no one my help. I will abstain from every act of injustice and corruption. Above all else, I will do no harm. I freely take this oath and will maintain the noble traditions of my profession. All 
always tempering my science with the warmth and humility of the true physician. You may switch the tassels from the right side of your mortarboards to the left. Congratulations, doctors, and welcome to the profession of medicine. You may be seated, doctors. <laughs> I would now like to welcome to the stage Dr. Christopher Steffes, our Associate Dean of Clinical Education and veteran of the Army Medical Corps and retired Colonel Dr. Arthur Eisenbrake, Clinical Associate Professor of Pathology. Some medical students during medical school are commissioned officers of the Medical Corps of their respective services. In addition to full medical training at Wayne State School of Medicine, they complete military officer training and also train in military medical facilities. Upon completion of their MD degree, the officers are promoted to the rank of 03, Captain in the Army and Air Force, and Lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. We now recognize these promotions. Lieutenant Colin Bennett, U.S. Army, will complete his residency in family medicine at Womack Army Medical Center in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Lieutenant New Doe, U.S. Army, will complete her residency in internal medicine at Madigan Army Medical Center in Tacoma, Washington. Lieutenant Aubrey Neal is deferring recommissioning and promotion for a civilian residency in psychiatry at the DMC. I now introduce Colonel Arthur Bradley Eisenbray the official for the official promotion ceremony. Attention to, order, to orders. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like all of the current and current military members, retired military, and veterans to please stand. We're supposed to have a bugle call, but we'll survive, won't we? <laughs> the President of the United States, acting upon the recommendation of the Secretary of the Army, has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and abilities of Second Lieutenant Colin Bennett. In view of these special qualities and his demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Second Lieutenant Bennett is promoted to the grade of Captain, United States Army, effective the 13th day of June, 2022, by order of the Secretary of the Army.
Sir. Thank you. The President of the United States, acting upon the recommendation of the Secretary of the Army, has placed special trust and confidence in the patriotism, integrity, and abilities of Second Lieutenant Nu Do. In view of these special qualities and her demonstrated potential to serve in the higher grade, Second Lieutenant Doe is promoted to the grade of Captain in the United States Army, effective 9th day of June, 2022, by order of the Secretary of the Army. Congratulations, and thank you all for your service. We have one more special speaker, and that's the class president, now Dr. Mugda Joshi, president, class of 2022. Please come up. Wow, that is going to take some getting used to um, after four years. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, on our first day at Wayne, a wise old traveling salesman from Texas Tech told us that the key to medical school was concept maps. Um, no offense to him, but no. Um, if the last four years have taught us anything, the key to medical school is our friends, our families, our peers, um, Wayne faculty, UFAPs, and a lot of caffeine. And I'm aware that I just said that on camera but it's okay. It is with passion that we charge forward with our conviction and strong sense of self as we pledge to do exactly as we're told for the next three to seven years. Today is a day of celebration. Medical school has been difficult and everybody sitting here in this room and those of you watching on the live stream have sacrificed so much to be here today. But you don't need me to tell you that. Um, you've all lived it. I, when I was writing my speech, I contemplating writing something that was 100% happy and celebratory because this is an exciting day, but I feel that to do so in these times would be naive, so bear with me for a little bit. While we celebrate our achievements and our entrance into the world of physicians today, we also now carry with us a heavier sense of responsibility um, as we are in the midst of many public health crises. We must support each other and take a stance to protect those that are being threatened. We have to take everything we've learned in P4 and apply it not only to reality, and, but to our practices as well. We must not only acknowledge, but also act on the knowledge of systemic racism in healthcare, the threat of a woman's autonomy being taken from her, the mistreatment of the LGBTQA population in healthcare and public se settings alike, and the mass casualties that are unfortunately a daily news occurrence now. To do anything otherwise is a disservice to our patients and our communities and to our profession. <laughs> but on the bright side, being a medical student at Wayne has uniquely prepared us um, to handle these public health crises. From the very beginning, we have been given so many opportunities to work with so many different populations, um, to learn about our community, and to learn firsthand the public health issues that they face, um, which is not something that every medical school, I think, can confidently say. And we have taken all these opportunities. 
we, the class of 2022, have been involved in a, a wide variety, um, and we have fought for so many different causes um, during our time here. From the get-go, we volunteered at Corktown Clinic, which is Michigan's only free clinic for the LGBTQA population. Um, in between studying histology and doing our Anki cards, we worked towards racial justice and equity with committees like the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Belonging, as well as the Institutional Justice and Inclusion Committee. When we were trying to figure out what the rule of fours was, we still made time to submit a re resolution to the American Medical Association about gun safety training for physicians so that we can educate our patients as well. That resolution, I believe, was accepted in 2019, by the way, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, good job, guys. You guys have killed it. I could sit here for hours, and I could list every single thing that we have done, but I think I've made my point. You guys are incredible. Time and time again, I have been blown away by the passion and compassion my peers have shown towards not only each other, but to the community of Detroit. Just take a step back and look at how much you have done as a medical student. And like Dr. Adish said, just think about how much you're going to do as a physician. And that's incredible. <laughs> I know that many of you are going to become leaders in the face of these public health crises, and I'm really excited one day to turn on the news and see your faces and say, I knew that person in medical school. I know it's gonna happen. I'm truly grateful for the well-rounded education that Wayne State has given us, both formally and informally. We have learned so much inside and outside the hospitals. We learned how to navigate a global pandemic with PPE shortages. We learned how to quickly look up answers on up-to-date during rounds. Um, and now I know the difference between a four-sided soft cap and an eight-sided TAM. <laughs> no matter where we end up, we will always carry our grit and our warrior spirit with us. It is traditional to end every student senate meeting with an update on the countdown to graduation. And I'm excited and a little bit sad today to give my last countdown update. If anyone was curious, there are zero days until graduation. <laughs> Congratulations, physician class of 2022. Thank you, Dr. Joshi. I would personally like to congratulate you all on this amazing accomplishment. It has been a true honor to work with this historic class of 2022. I would also like to thank my very dedicated staff for working behind the scenes to make this a happy and memorable occasion for you. Now, to conclude the program and in my capacity as your class marshal, I would like to offer a benediction, a blessing, if you will, written and adapted especially for you on this occasion. Our creator and sustainer accept our thanks for the opportunity to gather today. As we depart, bless each person here, bless their education, deliberations, and fellowship. Give us open minds, a clear understanding, and a steady purpose to make the most of our talents lead us to where we can best serve. Guide and direct our school, its leaders, and our own actions. Grant that each graduate may fulfill their responsibility to medicine, to our communities, to our country, and to the world. Let us be a source of hope and comfort for those in need. May each of us know the joy of caring. We thank you for preparing these new physicians to serve and be your healing hands. Amen. It was a true pleasure having you our, as our guests here on this commencement, both here and also via live stream. Please remain in your seats until the faculty and the graduates have exited the auditorium. Enjoy this very beautiful day with your graduate, your new doctor, and may you have a safe journey home. God bless you. <laughs>